What's going on out there, everybody? My name is Jeffrey Jocelyn, and this is episode 9 of my podcast. My thoughts on this and also on that. And this week, I'm interviewing a um, gentleman I recently connected with, who's the founder of an app called We Should Write Sometime. And I think I stumbled upon it through LinkedIn and uh, hopped on there. And uh, basically, the premise of this app is like Tinder for songwriters. And I uh, was able to, um, over the last month or two months, been able to connect with some other songwriters in town here in Nashville and then also connect with uh, songwriters out of town, New Jersey, Canada, uh, New York, and right there via um, FaceTime or Zoom or Google Chat or whatever. But it's a pretty awesome platform and it's given me a way to connect with other folks in a time when things are pretty shut down or uh, a lot less music going on than I guess used to be in Nashville. And uh, yeah, so I chatted with him a little bit. Uh, other than that, not too much going on on my end. Um, if you listen to some of the last ones, you heard that I'm not on uh, Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. or anything. I mean, I might have a Facebook page, but I can't get into it. So <laughs> if you try to communicate with me there... You won't be able to. So the best way to find me is on my website, jeffreyjocelyn.earth. Also on YouTube. Uh, I'm on some of the new social media sites. I'm not that active. I have a Telegram channel you can pop on to. Uh, I'm on Gab. I'm on uh, Rumble. But uh, other than that, yeah, just go to my website. Um, you can reach out to me, jeffreyjocelynmusic at gmail.com. Other than that, not too much going on try and keep you updated but without further ado here's my chat with mr kevin mccarty of we should write sometime i'm here with uh kevin mccarty kevin is the founder of an app called we should write sometime um uh, kevin thanks for taking the time absolutely thanks for having me jeffrey excited yes to sir with you. yes sir likewise so we've chatted a little bit so i know but tell the folks um, out there a little about yourself, your, your musical background and kind of where you come from and how you got into creating opportunities, uh, in the app space and, you know, helping artists like myself find ways to write. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I'll, it's sometimes kind of a long story, so I'll try to keep it somewhat brief, but, uh, just context is always kind of good with these things, but yeah, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, Moved to Nashville, you know, about five and a half years ago. Um, Started playing music when I was early teenage years, but just kind of, you know, trying to play like the fun cover songs. And, you know, that was when Creed was really big. And so I tried to play Mm -hmm. some of those kind of songs. But uh, yeah, and then throughout high school, did, you know, standard battle the band type stuff. And then in college, was fortunate enough to... uh, play uh, in a band with a good buddy of mine that I actually grew up with. And I really rode his coattails, to be honest with you, throughout college because he was a mm-hmm. f- phenomenal singer and keyboard player. And, you know, when I was um, playing sports and he was doing piano lessons and we were like, dude, come on, play all football. And he's out there playing piano lessons. I'm like, I wish I was doing guitar lessons mm-hmm. alongside you because when we got to college, uh, he was incredible. And so, You know, it was fun, right? But I knew after, you know, college what my other passion was business and technology. And so, uh, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't good enough to quite make the music thing a career. And I was just good enough to, to, you know, play the six chords that every fun college bar (laughs) wants to hear. And so it was, uh, it was a great time. But I, um, so after college kind of went into the business world um, and learned just, you know, from a huge 40,000 person organization to kind of a smaller tech startup feel company, um, before I got my, uh, before I left Cincinnati to move to Nashville to get in, you know, the whole goal was to get into the music tech space just because I love music and I love tech. And mm-hmm. I was just saying, Hey, like I got to get to Nashville just because that's where it's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll figure it out kind of when I get here. So I, I had had a full time kind of like tech sales job um, until uh, July of 2019. And so I, you know, as we were developing the app and doing those things, and I'll get into that story, but uh, I was basically doing two jobs, which was how do we get this idea off the ground? But, you know, I have a a full-time job that I need to 
make sure I'm doing it some capacity. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And, and when I got to Nashville, it was a phenomenal experience in terms of, of timing, in terms of me meeting my co-founder of the app. Mm-hmm. But all I did when I got here, to be honest with you, is just like, how do I be around musicians and songwriters and just wanted to be engrossed in that in the industry and culture as much as possible. And, and we're fortunate enough here, as you know, uh, where there's rider rounds every night all over mm-hmm. the place. And so it, it was not only kind of my escapism that I like to call it of just me listening to the greatest singer songwriters in the world play music mm-hmm. just to kind of like, um, just sit there and listen, but it also gave me huge opportunity, obviously to meet a lot of singers and songwriters and just kind of network. So, mm-hmm. I'll pause there for a sec if there's any follow-up okay. questions or Yes. So uh the the job you had before, was that in the music space? That other business tech you uh full time no. gig was it? no. It was in the education technology space. And so okay. I was selling and it, it and it's relevant because um I equate a lot of what I was doing on the education technology space to the, you know, kind of the music tech side of it in terms of the adoption of technology. And there's a lot of similarities, I think, you know, from my experience of we're selling these big data tech platforms to to colleges and universities. And, you know, it's kind of a um, new way of doing things, if you will. And, you know, from my experience in the music tech space, you know, when I first actually got to Nashville um, as kind of like this side hustle thing, I I was fortunate enough. I just call it a learning lesson, but there was a, Mm. a company that was. Uh, basically licensed their the Nashville market. Um, they're based out of Brazil, but they licensed the Nashville market to a friend of mine, and he brought me on. And it was you know like a side hustle. And it was hey like let's let's see if we can make this a thing in Nashville. And it was essentially um, a platform for artists and musicians to find out where their fans were, and then to mm. kind of crowdsource shows through their fans based on their activity through social media. Nice. And yeah, and I think there's a couple of things that, that have come out since, you know, this has been five years, similar, like that are similar to this. Um, but I, you know, when I got here, I was like, this is going to change touring forever because it mm. kind of reverse engineers instead of saying, hey, fans, like I'm going to be in these 12 cities. Let me promote, let me market, let me put everything on social. And let's just like, how do we get it out there as much as possible? And it's just kind of flipped it and said, hey, where are my fans at? And then once I find that out, then I can just be, be really strategic and say, oh, man, I have, you know, 300 fans in in Memphis that I didn't even know about. If we can pre-sell 20, you know, 200 tickets at 20 bucks a pop, then great. We got a show. And you, mm. if you don't meet the threshold, then no show. Mm. Um, so it's kind of like the Kickstarter meets, you know like this on demand kind of platform. And, and I was like, super, I was like, this is, this is amazing. Mm. Um, but once we started integrate in, like we did a couple beta tests with some, uh, pretty big artists and, and songwriters just in work with those teams, it was kind of my first kind of kick in the face, if you will, of, <laughs> of adopting technology, at that level into the current ecosystem that the way that this is that the way touring is done, the way the booking's done, uh, the way the marketing's done. And so I was under the impression, I was like, look, you're going to make more money. You're going to save time. You're going to give the fans what they want. Like it's going to, it's going to be amazing. And that was my first experience of like, well, that sounds great, but you're taking like six people's jobs and the resistance we got was pretty heavy because of that. Mm. And um, in the company wasn't based in the U S. And so when we went back to him, we kind of said, look, we, we need a pretty big infrastructure here if we're going to make this work. And, you know, it was, I'd made $0 from doing it, but it was an eight month Mm -hmm. learning lesson of just kind of how the industry works. And, you know, they said, we're not going to put any resources behind it, you know, thanks. And I, you know, we kind of just parted ways, which, you know, for me, I just, again, it was a learning experience, but, um, I think it was just my, the mentality for me when I got to town is just like, do everything you can in the music industry, no matter what, uh, and, and involve yourself in anything you can and be around the people and, and learn from there, um, Mm -hmm. was a big part of me when I first got here. 
Okay. So you, and then what, when was that? What year was that? Oh man, that was, uh, so I moved here in August of 2015. Okay. Um, and then, you know, and as I started meeting people, there was, uh, another th- buddy of mine that his name is Donald Jenkins. He started a podcast called Nashville hits collecting dust. And so he was, hmm friends with a lot of really, really big name artists. And they, he was friends. With, he's been here a long, long time, but he was friends with them kind of before they uh, are the, the A-list stars that they are now. And it, it's pretty clever what he did because he's not in music. He's, he's more of um, kind of on the motivational side. And re- he wrote a book and just kind of mm-hmm. like one of those MC type guys that's really awesome. But, you know, he would he would be hanging with them on Tin Roof at Tin Roof and Demonbrian and They'd be drinking and, uh, you know, their EP or a new single would come out and my Donald would go, Hey man, like what, where was that one song that you guys wrote? I listened to the demo. It sounded great. Or, and they go, Oh man, it's, you know, it's sitting on a shelf collecting dust somewhere. Mm. And he was like, you know what? Like, I would love to start this kind of new podcast where, you know, you guys come on and, and not necessarily talk about like your songs that you're writing more about the story of like when you got to town and, you know, your pro your, your progression through the industry and lessons to be learned. And that way it's kind of like the overcoming obstacles, motivational piece of grinding Song, through the industry. Yeah. Nashville, Nashville songwriter therapy. Exactly. Or like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. All share our wounds. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, you know, how do you, if you maybe not music, there's applicable themes with throughout that, that you could then, you know, apply to whatever it is you're working on, whether it's arts or, you know, business or whatever. But yeah. the, the kicker was at the end, you know, you're going to play an original song that you think is a quote unquote hit collecting dust. And so it mm. was kind of a, hey, man, this didn't get released. It's not out there, but play a live song mm-hmm. of a thing that, you know, it's just collecting dust somewhere. So super cool. Uh, and cool. so he was started doing that. And I just reached out and I said, dude, I'm kind of a big nerd. I love the tech side of this, all this stuff. And I know there's a lot that goes into podcasting and as you know, and you know, the editing portion and all that stuff. And this was, you know, a handful of years ago, but Mm -hmm. we did about 50, 50 episodes together. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. Um, but I kept hearing a theme pretty, (laughs) I kept hearing a theme come out of a lot of these really awesome singer songwriters and musicians that, you know, when they moved to town, um, they, you know, they didn't really know a ton of people. They were told by whether it's organizations or people that have been here, just, Hey, you got to get out and network. You got to get out and network and meet your co-writers and meet a bunch of people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, and and their response was like, yeah, I mean, I definitely didn't mind doing that, but it wasn't my preference. I'd rather, you know, I'm kind of an introvert and maybe just kind of want to chill and, and meet people that I want to write with, uh, you know, not having to go out every night till midnight, one, 2 AM. And, and it's not so much my scene, but I know I got to do it. And again, I didn't think anything of it until my co-founder came to me and just said, hey, man, I got this idea. And the idea was, uh, you know, for for the We Should Write Some Time app. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's got a crazy backstory that's like so inspirational and um, on where that idea came from. But we he and I would be out together at the writers rounds all the time and and. Uh, he runs a nonprofit that I can talk about a little bit, but uh, it was all a timing thing, to be honest with you, Jeffrey, like just mm. it all kind of came together at the right time. And he comes to me with this idea and he's like, dude, if I could sit on my couch and swipe through songwriters um, to be a part of my nonprofit, you know, I think it'd save me a lot of time. And he doesn't drink, but he was always out trying to meet songwriters because he had to. And, you know, I fortunately had a designated driver for a really long time because he just come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so okay yeah so i remember you mentioning him he has the uh non-profit for vets with mm-hmm. regards to uh it's called creative vets right is creative vets yeah and, uh, so is he the same one that has the podcast the, the collection no 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 a different okay. friend okay um but yeah richard casper is his name and and his mm-hmm. story is incredible if people want to look him up and they time magazine did a you know 20 minute documentary on him uh, in his story. And it's very, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, I don't think in terms of the app and what we've done, but you know, he's a combat disabled veteran and was, was serving overseas and, um, he was blown up four times and has Mm. had a, suffered a brain injury and 
when he came back, uh, as you can imagine, was dealing with pretty severe uh, PTSD. And, you know, mm-hmm. he the way he got through that and his story is just beautiful. But the way he eventually uh, worked through that was through art and through music and, and writing mm-hmm. songs. And because that was his way to express his story and tell it without having having to tell it. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you ever meet him, he's a six five Marine and he's got tattoos and, you know, <laughs> ripped. And you're like, dude, I'm not messing with you. But he's a big old teddy bear and has wonderful mm-hmm. dad jokes and, you know, is like the <laughs> sweetest dude ever. But um, he started the nonprofit because he was like, man, if I'm a veteran and this is what helped me, there's got to be other veterans that we can help. And so he started mm. Creative Vets seven years ago and they, there's like kind of two facets to it of they send veterans to art schools all over the country, full tuition paid for to kind of go through their art programs. Wow. And, um, then also brings in veterans from all over the country to write, um, write, you know, tell their story for the first time with number one hit songwriters at the back of the Grand Ole Opry. And, hmm. um, and that's just some of the amazing stories and, and songs that have come out of that, that industry or out mm-hmm. of this, the nonprofits just amazing. And it, you know, can bring you to tears just listening to that stuff. But, you know, when, when he, uh, so when he and I would be hanging out all the time, just going these writers rounds, cause he wanted to find songwriters to be a part of the nonprofit. I just was like, dude, I'm your guy. Like I'm, I just want to be around everybody I can again. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we became really, really close. And that's kind of when he pitched me the idea because he goes, Hey man, uh, I think I found the one, uh, ironically enough on the dating app on a dating app. Mm-hmm. And he was like, so I, you know, she's got a nine to five and I'm out all the time. So, but I still need to find songwriters. So like I was saying, if I could just sit on my couch and swipe through songwriters that might want to be a part of my nonprofit, that would save me a bunch of time. But then it would give a tool to these veterans, wherever they came from, you know, Idaho, Nebraska, wherever, that they could then find other songwriters to connect with to continue that healing. Right. And Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, dude, I keep hearing uh, on the podcast I was on and just like how difficult it was for, uh, songwriters when they first moved to town or whenever, just like to find their group of, of writers to write with and to co-write. And, and it just is something that I haven't seen anything out there that's specifically focused as an app. There's organizations Mm -hmm. out there that do this stuff, but as an app that just is like, Hey, you know, we're, we're here just to help songwriters find other co uh, songwriters to co-write with. And, uh, that was kind of the birth of it, uh, in 2017. Okay. So you, okay. So 2017, you have this idea. And so immediately were you like, Oh, let me go find a developer. Like what were the <laughs> steps you took to so like, it, you know, yeah, it, it's not like, it's not every day that somebody's like, Oh, I'll make, yeah. I'll make an app. Bro. I think I'll make an app. You yeah. Know? And so, I mean, again, it's like, you know, I think the the timing of it all is is really I'm really fortunate and lucky with it. But I also just say, look, like, you know, luck definitely g- fine, right timing, right place. But also, it's the it's the wherewithal to go. I have to be around the people that are going to bring the opportunities to you that mm-hmm. that are part of my my the reason I'm here. And mm-hmm. um, so we when he had the idea like i ran home and grabbed like a whiteboard that i had mm. or like the big white pieces of paper that you see at like conferences all the time and Hell yeah i had it from the my old um from my old job and so we started doing like wireframe drawings and i was looking up online to see what was out there in the market and so like we spent the next 4 hours like coming up with wireframes doing some research to see what else is out there and, and kind of found that gap. And, and what, so what is a wireframe? So think of just like, you're drawing what the app could look like on a piece I got of paper. Um, sure, um, sure and it's actually mean. funny. We still have those big pieces of paper in the office that you'll mm-hmm. have to come check them out. And they're really funny looking. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and then like, I, it looks like the inside of your brain. Right? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. And yeah, we actually needed to do a video on that. That'd be funny. Um, <laughs> So I did. So I have a a good friend that actually grew up in Cincinnati with me, and he moved down to Nashville ten plus years ago. And so he's in the development world. And we reached out to him, and we just said, "Dude, we have an idea. Would this be something you would want to be a part of? Like, obviously, you'd have to develop it, but we would pay you." And 
you know, we'll give you some equity, right? Like just it's early stage startup, like, you know, who knows, just an idea. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Then did you know did all the the paperwork legally set up the LLC and all that good stuff and mm-hmm. um, and started that process and and so you know it was hey great like we're off and running let's meet every two weeks he had a full time job I had a full time job Richard's running mm-hmm. uh, the nonprofit and so it was mm-hmm. one of those like how much time could we really spend on this per week is like mm-hmm. you know maybe ninety percent full time stuff ten percent app startup. And then over the course of, you know, the next couple of years, it shifted, uh, on its head, but yeah. you know, every two weeks we're meeting and talking about timelines and, and the, the designs of it and what the, the UX of it and the, mm-hmm. like everything. And so eight months we're working on this and, and we're pumped. And as every two weeks that go by, we meet, we're like, great, we're going to put this in, we're going to put that in, we're going to have all these integrations. Like it's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and eight weeks or eight months go by and I get an email from my friend and I, again, I've known him since I was, you know, in junior high and one of my really good buddies. And he sent me an email and it was a Wednesday morning at like 7am and it, and it just like the first line was, Hey, Kevin, this is the hardest email I've ever had to write, but, uh, I, we can't, I can't work on the app anymore. And I, mm. you know, um, there was a big, long email behind it ex- explaining it. And, you know, it mm. was a, a big kick in the face. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's one of those at that moment where it's justified, I guess you could say from his perspective in the sense of, you know, we had legal deadlines and requirements that we needed mm. to have. And he said he was, he owned up to it of, I didn't know the code as well as I thought I did. And, I, uh, I'm not going to deliver it on time. It's going to be shitty and I'm not sure. And I don't want my name on it and I don't want to ruin our friendship. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it sucked, um, to be honest, but thankfully, uh, I also have been a member at the Nashville Entrepreneur Center here since I moved here and mm-hmm. they have like an advisory program, um, that really helps out with everything from in startup life of, you know, if you need someone to talk about legal or marketing or setting it up or, you know, financials, anything. Mm-hmm. And so I met with them and, you know, I, I sent in and I said, Hey, like, how do I find developers? Like I didn't never had to do it. And so set up a couple of meetings that way. And then for like the next three or four months, we kind of went through, you know, felt like dating to be honest with you, because, you know, you, you meet with companies here in Nashville and you tell them the idea and then they, you know, follow up and give you like a proposal and a statement of work and all this stuff. And then they pitch you and, you know, then you're having to break up with three of them. Um, (laughs) and then we, we, you know, we finally found a full-time development shop, but, you know, I, I look back now at that time when the, when my friend quit and Mm -hmm. I, I can't be more, uh, grateful that that right. happened. Um, and if that didn't happen, I'm not sure we would still be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, as much as that sucked, thank God it happened because we were doing way too much, way too early. And mm. all of the things that are coming out, like, you know, spring 2021 are things that we were going to be putting in, you know, November, 2018. And, um, and it was all these cool features and functionality and like, we're pumped about it, but you know, a lot of the lessons and advisors and mentors were like, Kevin, just like build the core thing of it and get Mm -hmm. it out there and let people Mm -hmm. tell you what they want, what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And I always quote Reed Hoffman with this from, you know, he started LinkedIn. He said, if you're not embarrassed by your first release, then you've launched too late. Mm -hmm. And I sit here today going, I'm still embarrassed by a lot that is on Mm -hmm. the app because of, you know, like, for example, at this very moment, if I sent you a message, you wouldn't know when I sent it. It just says what I said. (laughs) It doesn't tell you, it it doesn't have timestamps, but Mm -hmm. And that's all part of it because it's one of those like, what are must haves versus want to haves? And um, yeah, we were, you, who knows until the, the, the songwriters start messing with it and yeah. start saying things that they actually might need or right. Want. And so, yeah, like, and it forced us to go out and, and uh, get some early, you know, um, investments from, from some people and uh, 
Yeah, that was yeah. that was going to be my next question. Was fundraising? Yeah, um, it's yeah. How would that look like for you guys? So we we've grinded out a lot uh, on the fundraising fundraising side, and and so we had you know a couple just early private angel investors, but just enough mm-hmm. to kind of get us started. And then Richard and I have put in quite a bit ourselves. Were those um, um, were those within the music business or more in the tech? So space one, uh, yeah, the second one he actually owns a catalog company out in LA, which is super helpful. And so he's mm-hmm. very familiar with what we're doing and super pumped about it. Um, and then like a licensing. Uh, yeah. 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 And so it was nice because now there's kind of a little bit of an LA footprint. And then mm-hmm. one of the investors is, is a big music guy, but not in the music industry, but is mm-hmm. a, a very um, he's an expert on the tech side. So, having that kind of investor is super helpful because it's very strategic and helps me as, you know, first time, um, tech founder, if you will, of some yeah. starting something purely from scratch. It was nice. It's nice to have somebody like that where you can be like, Hey, here's, you know, all the back end stuff and front end stuff. What do we got to talk through? What do I need to make sure of? And, um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, we're, we're at that point now where, uh, we're raising kind of like our first, real big round um, mm-hmm. because it's literally just Richard and myself and we need to hire people and get all that stuff started. And so it wasn't until um, last. So I went from July, 2019 to September uh, 2020 mm-hmm. of not make like is when I first went full time, but you know, I went almost a year not making anything mm-hmm. Um until we kind of raise a little bit more money um, to to build out this next phase of the app before we really scale it and and get a huge kind of seed round, I guess you'd call it. Mm-hmm. So when did you open the app as far as like uh, for people to sign up and yeah. start using it? So you could like so it it's kind of a funny story because in May of 2018. We had signed up, uh, just Richard and I ourselves, we had like made two We Should Write Sometime shirts and our um, our early investor got us tickets to the ASCAP Expo. And Oh, there you go. Out up in LA. <laughs> yeah. And so we were super pumped, but we told the developers, we're like, hey, we're going out to LA for the ASCAP Expo. Like we need it to be able to be downloaded and and us to just start talking to people and watching them download it and do these things. And I mean, that was the drop dead date that we had set agreed upon it months in advance. And then we get, I mean, I'm walking onto the plane, emailing the developers, like, it's not, where is it? Like, I like we're getting on the plane and where's the app. And I was like, if we get out there, what are we going to do? I mean, just like sit there and be like, hey, I, here's a cool idea that's coming. <laughs> like, idea. like shoo away, guys. Like, no one wants to hear your idea. They want a thing. <laughs> and thankfully, as we're landing and I'm like trying to connect to the internet and like you get my emails, thankfully, it, as we're landing, it's it's available to be downloaded. Mm. Um, but, you know, like at that time, we didn't have Facebook login, Google login and didn't have notifications. It was literally like the basic Mm -hmm. building of an app. And I tell you what, like I spent, I think half of that time uh, on the phone and computer with the developers with 46 pages of just crap. That's wrong. That's not working. Like people Mm. are clicking here for some God knows reason, like (laughs) just, and so it was very good hands-on knowledge of like watching people download it, watching where they press. And, and uh, so that was the first time people could actually download it, but we didn't do any marketing. We didn't do any launch. We, it was just, let's, let's Mm one-on-one watch people download it uh, so we can see it. And obviously people were excited about it, but it definitely Mm -hmm. wasn't at, at a place where we could even scale it um, internally, but you know, even like, you know, the customer service side of it, it's like, Hey, my email is not working. And then like, you know, there's just so much crap wrong with it. Um, yeah. And all that stuff, it, it seems like such a big hurdle to something, you know, when you're trying to get people to 
get on something and utilize it, any all those things start to stack up, and then it ends up being an app on the back of their phone. You know, that's like, <laughs> yeah. they forget about. So I'm sure yeah. it was probably a struggle. And even though you do testing and and you do testing before you you get it really out there, I mean, there's nothing like the real thing of just. Yeah, I mean, we we tested it, it seemed fine, but now people are like doing weird things, and I don't understand. They're trying to do that, don't know why. Um, so we so for like the next six months until like you know we say we're actually launched in November of 2018, and that's when we had a lot of the the essential things that we knew people needed, like notifications, the geolocation feature to change your location within the app, Facebook, Google login, like a bunch of bug fixes. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, still, you know, it's still now we're at the place of, um, you know, two years later, like there's still so much manual things that that need to be automated before we really and truly start marketing and, and pushing hard on that front. So uh, but we're right. We're right about there. And so most of um, what you've been doing as far as telling people about it's been word of mouth or what yeah it's, kind of it's, been- it's uh because honestly the the next year the next ASCAP expo was the first time we had spent any money on i guess you could call marketing or sponsorship mm-hmm. or getting the word out there um and actually having a booth right it's you know and that costs a good bit of money but it's the perfect place for us to get new users and be in front of people um and you know there's still so did you go to any BMI or CSAC type events or, or mainly? Um, just that? So I'll get to the PRO part, which is pretty interesting too. Mm-hmm. And, and what's good about that. And, and for sure, I, I think that's, there's, um, well, I'll get through the marketing stuff first. And so like yeah, other, other, everything else after that, like has been organic after the expo has just been mm-hmm. like word of mouth. And to be honest, like so many, we have, right now 11 amazing interns from belmont and Mm. i take very much after you know like the gary v approach of content and trying to put out as much content as possible on every platform and a lot of dms and a lot of group conversations and just trying to be everywhere you can um and it's been all organic you know a lot of it has to do with you know the financial side of it but also i think because we're still not at that that at that spot with the app where like if uh, if 40,000 people got on the app like we're not structurally set up for that just yet just in terms mm. of the automation side um, but we will be in the next couple months which is really nice but like you know I it's just still you know Richard and myself and so uh, it's it's kind of like that slow growth part of it that mm. um, you know, Obviously, we'd always want more. We always are going to promote and and do as much as we can to get as get as many people on there with without spending any money. But uh, in terms of like the strategic marketing initiatives and launch stuff, we're we're a little bit off um, a little bit off for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, all right, so you've said that second ASCAP that was. Um... When did you say that? Uh, it's twenty nineteen because it didn't happen in twenty twenty, obviously. Obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So you start seeing people get on and what was some of the early feedback from the songwriters? Yeah. I, I, I mean, what's really nice now and I, I give, um, I give a lot of props to all of our interns again, just like helping us with this. But, um, I, I mean, it's, it's been all very positive because it's one of those things where we know we're trying to solve a pain point um, of how do you find other songwriters and connect with them and how do you save time? And um, I'm, I'm, I'm always a little too close to it when it comes to the crap I know is, is wrong and needs fixed. Like, Hey, I try to upload a photo and the photo doesn't upload for some reason. And then I look at it and they're trying to upload a poster sized picture of themselves. And it's just like (laughs) too big of a file. And, um, I get a lot of random requests. Sometimes they're like, I would love to do VR with the co-writer inside of the app. Can you do I'm like, Jesus, like if you want to give me $10 billion, (laughs) sure. Then I'll do it. Um, So there's a lot of like that kind of feedback of, I wish I could do. And I'm like, some of it's very legit where, I wish I could direct link to zoom. And I'm like, guys, that's coming. Like I, like all of the 
inefficiencies that it that we see when it comes to finding a songwriter, writing a song, producing a song, getting the song out to the people it needs to go to, or sh- or you want it to go to, like those are the inefficient inefficiencies we're building into it. But mm. like the early feedback's been like, hey. Uh, it's been my dream to write with somebody in Nashville because I'm in, you know, West Texas and no one here Mm. writes music. Like, and so with this, I'm able to get on here and change location and find some people. And, you know, with, with the pandemic, people are much more comfortable now with virtual it's, you know, for a lot, it's not ideal. And I think, well, for most, I think it's not ideal, but it's at least given some sort of a normalcy to feeling like I can do things virtually so that you're kind of more open to, mm-hmm. um, Hey, I, you know, I don't have to be on 17th Avenue in Nashville and, you know, music row and I can find people anywhere just from the comfort of my couch. And so, you yeah. know, we're, we're at this point, super excited from the feedback, but that, you know, that also for me is like that accountability piece and responsibility and the, you know, the, the don't F it up piece of like, mm. okay. Um, cause I, you know, I have this internal motivational p- part of me that like, Hey, it's a great idea. And I'm like, dang it. Like I, I, like that motivates me to go, this is a great company or this is what, this is a great platform that helps me versus great idea. I'm like, okay, like there's that motivation to, it's not an idea anymore. Like, and I know Mm. we're still so early that it still is in that phase, but Mm. you know, that's kind of a side note of the feedback, but I, you know, I think things like clubhouse, right? Like, like, um, we jump on that app a lot and, you know, chat with other singer songwriters and, when they hear about it and they kind of do the, I wish I would have thought of that type of thing. Mm-hmm. It, it feels good. Um, and I think we're set up to do something really good for songwriters, but you know, we have a long way to go. Yeah. And I, you definitely have created immense value. I know for me, I've done um, three now, um, awesome. two in, in person and one. Oh, great. It was actually the, for the first time I've, done a virtual co-write which i was like you know you never know how that's gonna go (laughs) sometimes just the zoom calls drive me you know you had the lag or the but you know especially with the music uh in the music sense where it's like if somebody's playing something is it gonna come across or the you know but it was like it was really cool it it might as well have been just like being in the same room and yeah got something really cool accomplished and met somebody in new jersey that's like oh that's you know we're gonna write again and yeah you know it's cool and and i i think um I think one bridge or, or one um, divide you're bridging is, you know, one one thing that's so um, uh, well being in LA for eight years and, yeah. and before that before that being in Nashville and then coming back to Nashville, there's this kind of it can be intimidating, and yeah. it's yeah. like this big this big giant thing that is you know very saturated with people that are trying to make it or trying to achieve and trying and everybody's trying any way they can to get things done but it can feel like you're you're knocking at a door in which they don't you know people don't want to let you in and i'm sure there's you know i don't know what it's like to be a name guy in nashville not with, yet anyway don't, not sorry, yet I'm sure not, you know? I, I, oh definitely i'm not but i <laughs> i i know what it's like to to be someone that i don't like the I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Like, I don't like the self-promotion aspect of this thing. Like, yeah, I'm not, in, I don't like trying to convince people of like, can I write with you? Yeah. You know, like, you know, I don't like being in that position of, you know, trying to break in. It's just like, yeah. um, so one thing that's probably, I would imagine at least for me and, and some others, this app has given us the opportunity to like find other willing people. Yeah. You know, people that are literally just willing, like one of the guys I wrote with, you know, seemed like he was just really eager to learn. Like he had a lot yeah. to contribute, but he, he, he kept mentioning like, oh man, that's a, that's, I'm learning a lot through this, you know? Yeah. And, um, so it seems to be, it's, it's like getting the, the mess out of the way of like having to play a game and you're like, <laughs> here's people that are just, they want to just write. There's no, there's right. no, you know, everybody's definitely trying to do their thing, but at least we all know like, Hey, I'm willing, you're willing. Let's, you know, let's, let's do this. Um, have you, have you heard a lot of that kind of, yeah. Feedback? yeah. 
so so and i love that you said that too and and the reason is um because obviously you know i i love the tech side of stuff and and i understand the social media world and I, you know there's this kind of part of me that with what we're trying to do is eliminate the con- not the concern of what you said but but help it in the sense of hey man like you write great songs and work your ass off. We'll take care of the rest. Mm. And, and that's the vision that I have for what we're doing in a sense, like, you know, because it is really difficult to keep up with the, Hey, you're, you got to get your name out there. Well, how do you get your name out there? And you got to be doing this. You got to do it. Like you got to post, you got content. It, like there's so oh, many things. Oh my gosh. And it's, it, I feel like there's part of it that takes away from the purity of songwriting. And again, like I, I'm obviously torn a little bit because there is that thing of like, Hey, there's so many great artists that got discovered through social and TikTok and all like they're mm-hmm. great, but, but there's others like, Hey, that there should also be that still, that that portion of people that just go, man, I just want to write great songs and not that the other people don't write. Like I I'm probably going to get in trouble at some point for saying all that, but like, well, I think there are anybody, but I think is- there are songwriters that just like, I'd say most of some of us want to be artists mm-hmm. and, and be the face, but some people just like to, and we all, I think like to write, write great songs and just right. serve, right. serve the song and allow a song to come through. Not really interested in, making a lot of noise we just want to yeah write great songs and and have them find their way to people's ears which we recognize that music can help and heal and do all the things and it's just like can we just can we just do can we just do the thing that we want to do you know you said it much more eloquently than i did because because i that's what i want right like you can do anything you want to get your name out there but if it is that notion of like at the end of the day we've we've got this platform that and again, we still have a long way to go to build it, but that's what kind of motivates me of going like, you shouldn't have to do all that stuff unless you mm. want to great. But like, if you write great songs, work really hard, we're not promising anything, but at least we can give that opportunity and that visibility and that pathway to wherever you want to go, like whatever mm. you want to do. Like it's, and I was telling, um, uh, I forget who I was telling this morning. I said, you know, my, it, it, like it's, kind of like building a minor league baseball or league to the major leagues, right? It's like, mm-hmm. how do you get from single A to double A to triple A to the majors? Mm-hmm. Like, how do we help that? And along the way, right, there's coaches and managers and teams and practice. And like, so you're basically building a, a an entire league, if you will. But, you know, I see that being the whole thing of, look, not everybody makes it to the majors, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And you can try, but it is kind of that sense of we're not promising, you know, it, like we want to get to that point. Like we're not promising it, but we, but if you want to really, really work hard and like put in the work and grind it out, but you got writing great songs is just the, the, the entry ticket. Like everybody's mm-hmm. writing great stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like how do we, build it in the way of going, man, I don't have to worry about what TikTok content I'm putting out if I don't want to, but if you want Mm. to great. And who knows what that world's going to look like in two, three years, but like, Mm. I don't know. Uh, It takes me back to sitting at blue bar when it was here in a writer's round. And like, there's Mm. three people in there and I'm listening to this this girl from Nebraska that no one's ever heard of. And I was like, she might be the best person I've ever heard ever. <laughs> right. Yeah, like exactly, just, exactly. Are people not see like there's three people here mm. and I'm just that feeling of watching that. It's like, I don't want people and songwriters or anybody not to pursue it because it's like, well, the only way to get noticed is that's like is being super present on all these platforms. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah no, I, and you bring, bring you bring up a great point because I think before, like, like never before in history, you have you kind of have this almost apparent um, shift, like very apparent shift between the old way and the new way, and what's kind of happening in between, which is like the big. 
Mm -hmm. You have the big labels, you have the big publishers, you have the big stars, and then you have kind of this movement maybe away from that a little bit or at least yeah. like something more genuine or a, maybe not necessarily genuine i don't want to judge the thing but just like maybe a little less yeah. produced or a little more for the little man or what there's all these kind of populist yeah. i guess kind of movements of the people and so i i see where <laughs> you you kind of it's kind of a back door yeah thing of like you know like even with like blockchain or yeah. bitcoin or that you know you have this kind of eliminating the middleman kind of movement where it's like, sure. let's just go direct to each other. Like speak to, you know, you're, you're, I'm sure you're swimming in this space a lot, like based off of what you see in your experience, what can you speak to about the changes we're seeing in the music business in general or in light of streaming? And sure. um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on it? So, you know, and, and uh, the beauty of, of where I sit is, is, you know, there's a thousand topics when it, you could break it down in like the spokes of the wheel of the music industry, I guess. Right. Like it's, sure. but to me, it's the center and focal point is the songwriter and it starts mm. with the songwriter, right? Like, and everything that comes off of that, you know, it then bleeds into the, the artist and the publishing and then the streaming and then the social and like, so, so when I, I try to be very focused on the songwriter and what do I see? And mm you know, the, the royalties and the paying and like all this stuff. And there's, there's so much that, that I see and read about and and try to make sure I keep up with it. And it's really, really difficult. Like the educational side of songwriting is incredibly difficult. And mm -hmm. I go from my experience of like, you know, there needs to be, here's an example. So like, out of the 5,000 plus songwriters on our, on the app, 60% don't have a PRO membership somewhere. They might not even know what that is. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's exactly my point. Like it's, and then you get into, you know, copyright law right. or, or royalties or publishing versus yeah. um, the master, all that sort of stuff. It's very confusing. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, like my terrible cut, like songs that I put out on a CD in college, like, you know, we, if someone said, what's BMI, I'd be like, I'm pretty sure I skipped whatever <laughs> class that is. I don't know, biology, mechanics. I don't know. Like I skipped it for sure. Right. <laughs> right. But you know, like that's what it, what I'm seeing. Right. And it's like, man, I, you know what I'm learning, all that stuff. It's, it is how, how do we make a very complex industry for the songwriter um, palatable in mm. the sense of how to be successful because it's one, you have to do the craft very well. And mm. the other side is you have to understand the business really well. And, mm. and we see opportunities for that for us because we are like, it's, Hey, how do we focus on the very center of that wheel of the songwriter? And it's like, man, you, like here's step one, like, mm. like make sure you're registered with somebody mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so you can get paid. Well, how do I get paid? And then it like, branches off from there mm. before we even go like how do i get my songs in front of an artist and you're mm. like dude you're you're on step that's step 1042 like mm. step one right like and so you know i to me i i look at it in probably a terrible way to answer your question just because but it is kind of to me that whole thing of like man, we could talk about all the, the changes in the industry that are happening, but like, that's almost like, Hey doctor, my knee hurts. And he just says, well, like here, just put a sprain on it without him looking at like, Hey, you know, like, does this ligament right. hurt? Does that ligament hurt? Like try to move it that way. And like really mm. diagnosing the actual pain point versus mm. just, Hey, like, well, this is what you should go do is put out content. And it's like, mm. Yeah, but what if you put out something great and then someone wants to cut it, but then you realize you didn't do X, Y, Z before it, and then they basically own your song and you're screwed. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, so so, you're, so what you're saying is you're you're seeing yourself not only as a as a um, liaison in in regards to um, creating opportunities, but also educating education for sure. Yeah. That's and that's the shift of. Uh, where I think we're, we're, we'll definitely head there quicker than, uh, it's very much something we want to, we want to tackle, but in a way that 
eliminates not eliminates because you got to understand it right and like if i go back to the major the the baseball analogy it's like you know man like you get to to a certain level and like you just go play and everything's kind of taken care of for you right mm. it's like walk in and, and your locker's all set up and you just got to put the uniform on but you still got to go perform but mm. like all that other crap like yeah you got an agent that kind of helps out with the paperwork and legal stuff and Mm. super weird tangent, but like it kind of, no, I, you, I, I completely understand that. That to me is probably one of the most debilitating things of what I do is like, like the easiest part for me yeah. is the, is the writing a, a, a comes most naturally the non, I mean, you obviously got to think about right. it, but like, it's what I do best. Yeah. It's, it's everything after that, that makes me crazy. It's like, yeah. okay, do I record do I produce this song? Do I record it? Do I put it out yet? Do I put it on SoundCloud? Do right. I put it on the streaming services? Do I? Yeah. What is the pathway for this song? Because there's too many. Exactly. And it's like it could end up on a, on an artist, you know, an artist cutting it. It could end up um, in a licensing deal. It could end, but it's like there's so many ways to go mm -hmm. about it that I think that to me it ends up being really paralyzing at least for me I can't speak for everybody but yeah. I think when I'm overloaded with all of the options it's like well then you just don't do anything right. you know they just right. sit on these songs and nobody ever hears them because you're just like I don't really know what to do and then you think yourself to death to the point where it's like you're afraid to put anything out because mm -hmm. well what if what if I put it in the wrong space or it should yeah. go here or there I don't know it's pretty maddening but no, I think, it, you, I th exactly. I do like the idea of, you know, having a potential liaison or, or, it's, it's, or at least an understand someone that is, you know. Yeah. It, it's the show up and play kind of yeah. feel like it's, it's, you know, and, and I, people might be like, man, there's so many intricacies to that. And I'm like, of course there are. Right. And, but, mm. but the frustrations of a songwriter shouldn't be the business side. It should be am I good enough? Or am I writing good enough songs? Am I working hard enough? Like mm -hmm. the controllable things that are limiting songwriters is, is I think has a lot to do with the actual business side and educational part of what it goes into a songwriter's career. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we could make a huge uh, value add for songwriters by how do we streamline that uh, as much as possible, you know, you still got to learn it. Right. But it's still that whole idea of like, man, just, you know, like I, I if I write songs, they're going to take care of it. And that's the, you know, 30,000 hmm. foot unicorn dream thing. But I, yeah. I, it's one, it's starting here, right. It's starting with put two people in a room, mm. just put two people in a room and, and like, you know, next couple months you could put up to five people in a room. Right. Mm. Like, but, uh, that's kind of where we go. That's where we start. And then mm -hmm. how, what's next. Okay. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So you are kind of describing your, maybe your, your overall game plan of like, you want to create a, a funnel, if you will, for songs and their writers to go that would yeah. equip them to con you like you guys do the writing and yeah. then we'll, which is essentially what a publisher does, but it's hard to get a publishing deal. Yeah. And yeah. it's, and, and they're not as lucrative as they used to be because the, the games, you know, not as many people are buying records. So you add that into the thing of like, well, you might get a publishing deal, but it's it, these days, unless you have like massive hits, it's probably going to suck. <laughs> You're not yeah, going to get that much money. And, 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 you, you know, know, the publishing side of it is huge. And, and, and that's there, we get questions all the time about it. So we, we want to work with, with publishers and it's not mm -hmm. so much like taking them out. It's like, mm -hmm. Hey, what are the pain points you guys have? It's discovering new artists, scheduling what you guys do with it. Great. So like, let's integrate what currently is there with what needs streamlined and remove friction points. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we already are having publishers kind of ask, Hey, who are the most swiped on people in Nashville? And mm -hmm. there's value to that. And it's because so you get that data within the app, like this, these people are yeah. getting swiped more than, um, and what 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 are the things that you find as far as data? What makes somebody get swiped more? Is it a good photo? Is it a credit list? Is it yeah? A it it is a it is a good photo of you. Um, it is a bio that is as descriptive as possible in the sense of like, hey, 
here, here's me and my music world in the sense of my genre, what I like to do, influences, what I'm looking for, links to anything that you have out there, um, mm-hmm. SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, your socials. And because I, socials is kind of key, and this is that kind of goes back to the thing of like, damn it, like I don't want to have to care about it, but it does give legitimacy when I see people click on their SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, whatever, but then they go to like Instagram, be like, hey, like, they don't necessarily need a ton of followers, but the fact that they actually put effort into showing uh, like, hey, this is some of the stuff that I put out, I'm playing music, like it legitimizes like the, the credibility of, hey, like they're taking this for real. Like it's mm-hmm. not a, oh, you know, um, and that's some of the feedback, but it is a complete, like when we first started it, man, you didn't need a full profile to get viewed and there was just a bunch of crappy profiles. And so then we changed it to go, look, you got to have at least this requirement set out to be viewable or you're not, no one's going to see you. And so, yeah. Um, talk about like your kind of day to day right now, as far as the maintenance of the app or, you know, what kind of, what is, what does this period in time look like for you right now? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's an interesting time, exciting time, uh, anxiety driven time, worrisome (laughs) time. (laughs) It's everything all mixed in one at this very moment, which I feel like anybody, uh, that started a business would feel the same way. You know, it, it's when you get off and running, um, that's when you realize there's a lot of work to do, but then you, it's hard sometimes to take a stop and go, you know, like, look how far we've come kind of thing. But, uh, my day to day is different every day. It, you know, a lot of the times because of the interns that we have, you know, they come in to the office, um, about once a week, obviously we try to be, um, as distant as possible and with what they're working on, they can do it, uh, remotely most of the time, which is really nice. But, uh, so a lot of the times, uh, throughout the day we're spending with them strategizing on, you know, social content, digital stuff, uh, and they're a huge help. And so a lot of the days are predicated on their schedule. And so there's, there's that component of it. The other component is obviously as we are developing, the next phase of the app to release in, in the next couple months, uh, working with the developers on uh, what the designs look like, any technical issues, kind of the strategy behind releasing those new features. Um, and then all mixed in there is, is you know, anything I can do from the customer service perspective, you know, making sure that I'm getting back to any emails, um, DMs, questions, any issues that people are having with the app. And so that's a 24 seven job because I try to make it a very, uh, I make it a point to have urgency when it comes to feedback or at least responding to anybody that gets to me, um, Mm -hmm with any issues within the app because we don't have a a support team. And so me being support, I'll get an email at nine, 10, 11, someone having an issue, maybe uploading a photo and then come to find out they have a very old phone that we don't support. Um, Mm. You know, and so there's a lot of those times, but every day is, is a combination of working with interns, working with uh, the dev teams, um, potential investors, current investors, um, but it's definitely not a nine to five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, with uh, customer support or that type of, uh, thought process, uh, mm-hmm. one thing that I was curious about, curious about is, do you have like any, uh, fail safes or have you heard, have you heard any like horror stories yet? Like of like, you know, especially like <laughs> random, I know a lot of it's done remotely, but like I've done, you know, a few now where I've met up and I've thought about that, you know, like, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm more trusting than maybe some other folks, but especially like with women, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like- yeah. I mean, you know, we obviously have the built in, you know, terms and condition privacy policy stuff when it comes to, to connections. And, you know, right now I think that that's one positive, if you look at it that way from, um, people being comfortable doing things virtually so they can do it via mm-hmm. zoom and they're kind of forced to do it. So it's, there's not really much choice sometimes, yeah. but, uh, you know, we, we haven't heard anything bad like it in, you know, I, uh, I'd be, it, it'd be naive of me to think there's not going to be something at some <laughs> point um, down the road, but uh, fortunately we haven't had to work with anything of that. You know, obviously we don't, you know, allow, you know, young teenagers on here because we don't want 
that to yeah. happen and then connect with somebody and then meet up with um, somebody that sh- they shouldn't. So um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. We haven't had too many issues with that. I'd say the biggest issues we have is just on the technical side. If, if no yeah. one's familiar with swiping on apps. Mm-hmm. And uh, have you, have you heard like a, a ton of the songs or a handful of the songs that people have written together? Yeah. And it's a funny thing you ask that because, because we're pretty pumped about, um, what's happening now and, and we've got to think how songs are are written and then um, recorded and produced and the timeline mm-hmm. that it takes to do that and so right now we're starting to get a handful of, of really good songs sent to us um, nice. and we're always asking for it too right like it's it's if anybody has a just a random song um, that they want us to promote like we're, we're starting to collect kind of a, a queue of songwriters that just saying, Hey, like here's a user of the app, go listen to one of their songs. Here it is. And so we're going to start doing a lot more of that stuff, but then it's kind of putting a special focus on songs that have been written by two songwriters that came from the app. And what's nice now is utilizing our relationships within the industry is um, we're getting asked by some, some people on the publishing side and A&R side, of really good songs slash songwriters that came from the app. And so you got to think from our perspective, that's, we want that very much because then it shows proof of concept that shows that there's um, not just, Hey, you're connecting people, but they're actually producing really good songs that then, you know, like it's, Hey, let's just find good songs now because we've only been two years ish. And so you got to think, um, you know, people connecting, people then co-writing and how many sessions it takes to write it and then to produce it. So we're now getting into that kind of timeline of where we're starting to hear and see songs getting released that were written from the app. And, you know, um, we're really excited about that because I think yep. that opens up a lot of possibilities for us. But um, you know. So as somebody, you know, I was curious as somebody that's, you know, writing with folks from the app, um, one question is like, I wonder, you know, talking about sending them over you guys way, what, what's the best kind of way to, um, like, do you want them in de- ideally like in demo form and, you know, do you want to send them in like batches of like, here, send me your top three or, you know, like, yeah. so you don't get bombarded with like, I mean, <laughs> or do you, or do you not mind? I mean, you know? At this point, we don't mind how they're sent over, whether it's, okay, whether it's honestly just like a, a work tape or a demo or a recording on the phone. I, I mean, it, I think what we're also navigating, uh, and I love your feedback on it, right. Is, is there's some hesitation sometimes of, of putting out things that aren't, um, fully done yet and, Mm. or produced to a, like, um, at a level where it's ready to go on a streaming platform because they're like, Hey, like, I know I'm still working on this, so please don't put it out. Cause some people have that fear of, you know, someone stealing it or whatever that, whatever it is, but they're like, you know, and so we're balancing that part because we've had a lot of people go, Hey, I've, I have some really good songs that we're working on. We've got some work tapes and and maybe some demos, but you know, once it's released, then I'll send it over, which totally understand that. But the other thing is like, we've had a handful of people say, um, Hey, I, I, you know, I have the song and I'll send it to you, but um, there's a, there's a possibility that, you know, it's going to get on hold and um, I need to wait to see what happens with that. And I've got a buddy that's, or a friend that's in the industry and they're, they're going to listen to it and maybe pump it up to whoever before I, and I, you know, and I don't ever um, push anybody on it. It's like, Hey, mm-hmm. we just want to promote your stuff. Like what, at, yeah. no matter what level, I just want to make sure it's like, there's not, um, they're not putting out music because, you know, they're afraid somebody's going to steal it or something like that. Yeah. I think on, on, on my end, I'm not, I'm not concerned about the stealing aspect. It's more of, I know that, you know, once it gets into in your hands or whatever you do with it afterwards, I just want to make sure that it is in in whatever form that the that whatever ears hear it, are, it's given a chance to thrive. So yeah. you like, yeah, you want it to be in a form where it's like you don't want them to have to strain to understand the lyrics. Like you want it to right. be serve it. You want it to be fully fleshed out and they yeah. get it to receive it in its full 
whatever yeah. full form you can get it to. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't miss opportunities, you know, especially with regards to what, whatever, you know, platforms you guys have or the eyes that are on your stuff you want. Yeah. To, and, and we to win. never yeah. put it in front of or send it to anybody. One without the, you know, approval of this, of the songwriter or songwriters plural. Um, but the other part is like, you know, we want to build this to a place on our end where we have the credibility of saying, look, like, we're only going to send it or introduce it to somebody when uh, when we know it's it's at that level um, yeah. because our name you know we like we our names on it you know yeah yeah um, so we want that credibility as well and and to be honest that's where we've had stuff sent to us and I'm like no oh, it's good um, but it's not at that level of like hey you know publisher at this label like check this out um, sure. because then it's you know like. And you're not, are you, are you necessarily giving that feedback right now or you're just collecting at this point, just, just trying to collect and then, yeah. and just, you know, put out songs. Like I think one of the, uh, uh you know, every Friday now we're, you know, we're putting out, uh, started a new thing where it's like, Hey, just send us one of your songs and we'll highlight, you know, four or five songwriters that are on the app and their songs. So you can kind of scroll through and see the talent that's on there. Cause we want to give mm-hmm. off that, um, as we grow the network, it's like, Hey, let's, let's like showcase the great songwriters and what they're producing out there. You know, whether or not it's a song from the came from the app, let's just highlight the songwriters. So that's like, Whoa, like there are really talented people on this app. Let's start driving eyeballs to it for down the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so talk about your, your contests you've been running. Yeah, super cool. It's, it's, uh, there's a, there's a funny backstory behind it, but, uh, it's two, um, you know, they're from Canada, Kelsey Kulik and Eric Etheridge actually are married now and they're two phenomenal singer songwriters. Um, and they're stuck in minus 40 degree weather in Canada. But, um, <laughs> you know, we had always wanted to do stuff like this, but there was just a, a an added opportunity for us to do it now. Um, where, you know, we're, we're going to basically have them go to five different cities throughout the U S and Canada, where as a user, um, you would just go into the app, geolocate to whatever city that that contest profile is for that week. So it was in Toronto. Then the next week we moved it to, um, LA and this week it's in New York, then it's going to go to Atlanta and then, uh, Nashville and anybody can, can, um, enter as, as as many weeks as you want all five weeks if you want but basically it's just really simple you go onto the app find the songwriting contest once you see that just swipe right on that pl- on the profile and then you've entered and what Kelsey and Eric are doing is going through all of the profiles and songwriters that entered and then listening to the to the music and you know there's some profiles that don't have any links so that's tough for them to to hear uh, anything that you've done but sure. that's kind of a cool thing just in in of itself of, you know, them just listening to uh, anybody that's entered some of their stuff. And from each city, they're going to pick two semifinalists. Um, and what they've been doing, which is really cool, is like a look, quick little FaceTime video it, it, congr- congratulating them that they are one of the two semifinalists of each city. So, you know, if it's out of the 10 semifinalists at least they uh, nine of them got a chance to kind of connect with them and chat but then the winner will get to co-write with eric and kelsey um and obviously it'll be virtual but uh you know it's it's free to enter and i think it's exciting which we want to try to and this is really what we want to try to build within the app is the ability to to write you know um with people up right you always want to write up and try to write with better people and how we can replicate that is what we're going to try to start doing, but just a lot more of the, Hey, just win a co-writing session with, with Kelsey and Eric. And they obviously have publishers they are really well known. So uh, it's pretty exciting. I love that. Um, so just the last couple of things. Um, if you could, if you could like imagine five years down the road, yeah. this thing, this thing operating on all, all cylinders, what does that look like? Ideally. Yeah. And, dream? and yeah. so, um, I'm a big sports guy and yep. I love baseball and we have a long way to go with this, but the way I see it is always one, putting the songwriter first, but that's really cliche of me. But you know, for me, it's, there is that part of me that goes, man, I, I hate um, seeing the best 
the best in the world uh, at an in an industry um, needing to do things other than what they're the best set of the world. And, and so what mm. I'm referencing, right. is like, you go, you go to Nashville and you're in Nashville and you go to these writers rounds and you see, and there's obviously amazing writers all over the world, but in this sense, like you see the best writers in the world. And, and I would, I want to build this so that they can write full time and get paid for it. Um, mm. and kind of somewhat replicate, I don't know how we're going to get there, but I'm going to get there. But it's like a, kind of like a minor league system to the major leagues in baseball, right? You got single A, double A, triple A. Like, how do we, you know, if you're if you're good enough, right? You should be paid to do what you love, and the better you yeah. get, the more you get paid, right? And it's not needing to, um, like, have side jobs to support the thing that you are the best at. And you mm. know, I it it very much to me feels like there's a way to do that. I just don't know how and, and all that stuff, but that way, you know, when you reach times like this um, and there's con- not confusion, but just kind of that frustration of, I have to spend all of this time doing other things besides songwriting. Um, mm. And I want to kind of flip it a little bit and say, no, 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 no. Like you just songwrite and we'll take care of the rest. Obviously like that's what, publishers do right but like from the other sense of um i do i need to put out tiktok videos and content and do this stuff like please do that like that stuff's amazing but like (laughs) please say say no (laughs) please tell me i don't have to put out tiktok videos well that's what i'm saying right but like (laughs) i know i know if you want and that's great it's obviously good for some people but the the reason that i think the best songwriters in the world again like this is all just kind of in my the way I feel about it, like if you don't want to do that stuff, like, and you're still just wanting to write music, like just do that. And we'll take care of yeah. that other stuff. Like, y- yeah. you know what I mean? And it sounds very, uh, unicorn and sunshine and rainbow type thing. But like, <laughs> to me, I don't want people not doing music because I can't financially make it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that, that to me is that, that dream of like people going, man, like, I'm, I'm making enough to get by, but at least I have an outlet or, or a path or a structure through we should write some time to get to that next level. Like, it's not like, um, you know, it's just like the, the, the minor leagues, right? It's like my goal is to go from single A to double A to triple A and then to the majors. And yeah, you need coaches, you need practice. And it's, yeah. how do we make it so the best, you know, if you work really hard and write really good songs we'll take care of the rest. That's great. So with that said, uh, go ahead and plug, you know, for those songwriters or um, those artists listening. Yeah. What, how can they hop in? How can they get involved? What's the, what's your advice to go ahead and. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's pretty simple. Uh, Just, we should write some time.com. And it's pretty much a landing page uh, to take you to the app stores, uh, Google play and the app store to download it. It's free. Um, you know, I, the, the tips, right. Is make sure that you got a, a good picture of you. Um, that always helps because it makes, lets you know that you're real along with all the links to your, to your music, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, all the links to any of your socials just that way. Um, cause a lot of the feedback we get is, Hey, I, you know, I look at everything in there and, and obviously the more that I can see and hear, um, you know, it gives me a much better idea of, who I potentially could co-write with. And so um, as much information you can put in the profiles, the better. And the other thing is uh, if you are geolocating, so if you're in the app and you're maybe wanting to go to LA, like don't go to LA and swipe on everybody and then leave because you got to give people time to swipe back on you. Um, Mm. And so that's a, that's a thing that, people saying, Hey, I'm geolocating, but I'm not uh, connecting with anybody. And I'm like, how long are you keeping your profile in the same city? They're like, not at all. And I was like, well, the likelihood of somebody swiping back on you in. Okay. So that, 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 that helps me. So you, when you geolocate, you, let's say you want to write with somebody in LA, you change your location to LA and you leave it there for a couple of weeks to at least give people time or however long, you know, Cause it, cause it, uh, cause if you swipe on somebody and, and then they, and say you leave, you know, the profile and we're working on ways to streamline this, but, um, and make this better. 
But, you know, if you swipe on everybody in LA and, you know, leave LA, they don't have the chance to swipe back on you. So nothing's going to happen, which is another thing why I say, Hey, look, reach out to me and I can, I can always reset the profile so you can do it again. Um, and so just, you know, email contact at we should write some Um, and just, you know, I'll refresh the profiles for you. But, um, th- that's a big thing for, for people to connect, um, and just use it more efficiently and effectively. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, I appreciate your time. And I want to say, you know, as a songwriter, you know, I think I've done five or six now. It's definitely been a, a, a much needed remedy, especially during this time, but just in general to, you know, learn and con- connect and collaborate and have new ideas and new ways of um, being creative. And it's definitely spurred new avenues in my mind of potential, you know, for creating for potential for licensing or, you know, there's just all kinds of things now that you want to, as you're connecting with new songwriters and artists, like ways for you both to thrive. Yeah. And I think what you've created. And I actually, yeah, here today, I, I had a call with, uh, with Mike Cali. Um, Oh man, I love that guy. Yeah. So I <laughs> it's so, had a call with we, him. He talked about you. I was like, oh my God, I'm actually talking to him again later this afternoon. So uh, he, you guys are both fantastic. So I can't appreciate you enough for, for having me on the chat. Absolutely. And you know, it's amazing, especially you mentioned him. It's amazing how quickly somebody you've never met, you know, he's in New Jersey. Yeah. Another guy today I wrote with, it was in Canada. It's amazing. I guess you just, I guess we're just kindred souls and how quickly people connect. Yeah. Songwriters can connect because we're, I think our brains work very similarly. <laughs> so it's very quick, you know, relationships can be built through this thing that are, you know, not even in the same state and friendships made and a lot of that going on yeah, too as, I, as well. I, so I appreciate that. And that's, and that's why we do it. It's, you know, yeah. and I, I you're talking about the five year thing and we're opening up uh, in more countries this year. And it's just, I'm, I'm excited to hear what the music kind of sounds like when we're mixing, you know, oh, man. melody guys from Israel with top liners in LA and, you know, track guys in the UK. And you're like, man, what is going to pop out of this? Uh, I love it. Yeah. You know, I think the other, I think the other thing you're doing is that is like, you're, you're kind of in a, you know, maybe not in such a romantic yeah. way, but like healing the world right now. Like we're all so divided. Yeah. And I, I've found that through this depending, you know, um, doesn't, I don't know. You can, I can, you can tell everybody's trying to fill the, fill each other out, sure. especially right now. But sure. I found that like the songwriting thing kind of bridges the divide. Everyone's there's a lot of common ground. And I, yeah. especially if you guys are going international, it's like a great way to just heal the world. Wow. Making music together. It's just this kind of great metaphor for like what, what the world needs right now. It's like, sure. put your differences aside and let's just make some music, you know? So, well, that gave me chills, my man. Cause that's what we're trying to do. And, and that's, and that's, you know, and a big part of it to, to everyone, right. Is like, uh, it, it music is that escapism for me. And I think, and I think for a lot of people of just like, you can get lost in it. And, and if we weren't helping songwriters do what they love and they couldn't do it because, you know, financially or just didn't have the outlets or didn't have the tools, uh, that's not acceptable. So, yeah. you know, like I appreciate that side of it because uh, that's very in line with what we're trying to do. Love it. Yeah, well, sure. Keep on keeping on. Great work Thank and uh, excited too. to hear excited to hear what uh, what's to come and, and, and all the things that grow from here. My friend, I appreciate it a lot. Yes, sir. We'll talk soon. All Thank right. You. Talk to you. Bye-bye.